Hey, this is Jamie, and by request, here's a video on interpreting the scatter plots that we made using our Zappos data on running shoes. For question A5, you're asked to make scatter plots. In the last video I made, I showed you how to make the scatter plot um, and confirm that overall ratings on the x axis, I mean, on the y axis, and the other variables on the x axis. We inserted a trend line, an equation, and an R squared. But then I ask you two questions. I want you to discuss your findings in a text box. And I want you to, to say, based on the R squared, which variable is the strongest predictor of a shoe's overall rating. Or for right now, you're going to be looking at women's road running shoes. And what I'm going to talk about is men's road running shoes. So back over here, I haven't moved my scatter plots. I made them and so far they're still in my second table on my second tab. Here are the two that I made. I'm not going to make all of them but for this video I'm just going to look at the two we made and we'll talk about them. And we'll talk about the things that we can learn from a scatter plot. So when we look at these scatter plots the first thing we can do is we can see how closely these two variables are related. We can see one how close they lie on this line. We can see the direction of the relationships. We can see that shoes with lower comfort ratings down here tend to also have lower overall ratings. And we can see that shoes with higher comfort ratings tend to have higher overall ratings. So we can see that there's a positive relationship between those two variables. But then more than that, here in number two, we can use trend lines to predict changes in one variable based on changes in another. And to do that, we rely on the slope. I'm going to zoom in for a second on my chart because I hope that you can see my equation for a line. So here, if we're looking at the scatter plot showing comfort rating and overall rating, we can see this equation at the bottom. y equals 0.6692 times x plus 1.2529. And this is nothing other than the old trusty standby, your most favorite ever equation for a line. And in this case, y is our y variable, the overall rating, and x is our x variable, the comfort rating. What this line is implying, and the equation for this line, what it implies is that the overall rating of a shoe is related to its comfort rating by this equation. So we can tell that an additional step up in comfort rating is generally accompanied by an approximate increase in overall rating of 0.6692. That's the slope of the line. and 1.2529 is the intercept. It's the theoretical overall rating a shoe would have if the comfort rating was zero, but there obviously is not a comfort rating of zero, even though some Zappos customers do claim they wish there were. The other thing we get on this plot, in addition to being able to see that as comfort rating increases, overall rating increases, and we know that a shoe with a three comfort rating is likely to have a 0.6692 greater overall rating than one with a two. We also know that one with a four is likely to have a 0.6692 greater overall rating. You might want to write that down. If it doesn't make sense, take this down and put three in the equation and then put four in the equation and you'll see that the difference between those two, two predictions for overall rating is 0.6692. The other thing that we want to know is how well do variations in comfort rating explain the overall rating, right? Is it important? Is it a strong predictor? So we can see that there's a linear relationship. At higher levels of comfort, we get a higher level of overall rating. But how much of it does that predict? In the R square of 0.4846, I'm going to round here, but what that means is that roughly 48% of the variation in a shoe's rating can be explained by the rating a customer gives it for comfort. A running shoe's comfort explains 48% of its overall rating. That is a relatively strong predictor. 
as contrast, jump down to the scatter plot of price and overall rating. If you eyeball it, let me back out for a second, eyeballing these two, you can see that the line showing the relationship between comfort and overall rating is much steeper than the line of price and overall rating. That means that as we jump up in comfort rating, we see a correspondingly larger increase in overall rating than we do if we jump up in price to see a change in overall rating. So the formula for price and overall rating is that the is y overall rating is equal to 0 0.0035 times price plus 3.6 with an r squared of 0 0.033. So how we would interpret that slope, we would say that a dollar increase in shoe price, so a price of $100 versus $101, right? It's a, it's a small jump in price gives you also a correspondingly very small jump in overall ratings, less than a percent or less than a 0 0.0, a very, that's like almost no stars difference, right? 0 0.0035 of a star. It also tells us that variations in price only explain about 3% of variations in overall rating. So there is a positive relationship between price and overall rating. More expensive shoes do tend to get higher overall ratings, but that relationship is weak. Only 0 0.0035 stars per each dollar of higher priced shoe. And the R squared of 0 0.0322 says that it's not a very strong predictor. It only predicts, price only predicts about 3% of the variation in overall rating. So if I were here in question A5, I would say, so I have two things to do. I need to discuss my findings based on the trend line equation and R squared on each plot. And then I need to say which of these is the strongest predictor of a shoe's overall rating. So if I jump back into this data, what I say, what I would say for these findings is I'd say both comfort rating and price are positively related with overall rating. However, comfort rating is a much stronger predictor of overall rating and that can be seen both with the larger slope. Each additional comfort point gives you almost a whole point in overall rating. And the R squared of 0.48, which says about 48% of the overall rating can be explained by variations in how people rate shoes for comfort. Price is a weaker relationship, and it tells us that overall, higher price shoes do get a lot more satisfaction, or do get some more satisfaction. But let's just try an exercise. Let's see how much higher we are likely to rate a shoe if we paid $50 more for that shoe. So I have my slope of 0.0035x and I have my intercept of 3.6696. So what I would say is I'm going to predict, right? Predicted rating at Let's predict a, what we're going to think our rating is going to be at $100. Let's predict it at $150, and let's predict it at $200. So we would predict, based on this equation, that our overall rating would be equal to, oops, I shouldn't have typed X in that file, but I, I can work around it and delete that X in a second. So our slope, so we have y, our overall rating is equal to m x plus the intercept, which is b. Pardon me, I'm going to get an error message right away, but then I can fix it by removing that x that I should not have put in there. So a $100 pair of shoes, we would expect to have an overall rating of about 4.02%. I want to drag that formula down, so I am going to give an absolute reference to both of those parameters, to both the slope and the intercept. Then I can drag it down and see that for each $50 increase in price, we get point. 
0.18 extra satisfaction stars, right? And that's the same for both because it's based on that slope. So you only get 0.18 overall benefit for each $50 shoes you $50 you spend on a pair of shoes. That's kind of what that slope and intercept are telling you. And price only explains about 3% of someone's overall satisfaction. And so I think that if you are a bar bargain hunter, this says good things about your likelihood of getting a shoe that you can really run in and use. Um, comfort sh shoes that have a higher star rating are likely to be comfortable, but they're also not necessarily likely to be more expensive. So I think you'd have good luck finding a comfortable shoe, even at a lower price point if you focus on that comfort rating. That's what I would say. All right. Happy calculating. Let me know if you have any other questions.